Welcome to this one-to-one. -one. I'm delighted to say my special guest today is Suzanne Grant, former uh, ladies footballer and, of course, uh, now retired. Yes. I bet you wish you were playing right I now do. in I this game. I wish I was 10 years younger, Peter, I tell you. Um, the standard of women's football to now is exceptional, so... Yeah, but it's good that it took us pioneers, as we say, to, to push the game forward. So it's great to see. Yeah. Uh, do you wish you were playing because of, uh, I hate to say it, I mean, I don't mean to <laughs> make you out to be a mercenary, no, but do you not wish, wish you were starting out the player you were and the money that's on yeah, offer down south? Yeah, of course. South? Who wouldn't? That's your, your dream, to be a professional footballer, whether it's male or female. So for me, I was really fortunate. I got to play for some great clubs and obviously I had college, I had to work, I had the kids. So for me, it was really difficult. So... To be able just to be a full-time professional footballer's course, that's what I would have loved to have done. Yeah. Who was your hero? George Alberts, actually. <laughs> yeah. Like, I, I, I loved him growing up. And obviously, up north, I'm a, like a Highland girl as well. So, yeah, I just I just love football, to be honest, Peter. And my dad was a great player, actually. played for our local team. So, yeah, I have so many idols, actually. Yeah. And, you know, a lot of people say, well, you know, maybe when you were starting out, there mm -hmm. wasn't a clear pathway. Mm -hmm. um, how did you find yourself suddenly getting to the opportunity? Well, I uh, played to a boys team, so my school team, and then we went to a tournament, me and my twin sister and Vicky Patterson as well. So we were only three girls in our boys team. And then there was a scout that day for the boys that picked us three up. So I didn't play with a girls team until I was 17. So obviously the pathway now that they've got, there's right down to under eight. So I didn't have that when I was growing up. So the opportunities now are great for girls and women in football. Possibly an even greater hurdle then for you to mm -hmm. get there. What do you think is a message that may well have been passed to you or that you would pass on to younger girls now who can see the train tracks towards a professional career? See if you enjoy it. Just keep playing, Peter. I mean, I'm from a tiny wee town up north and obviously a wee Highland girl, I wouldn't think today that I would have got, you know, over 100 caps from my country. So, yeah, I got some you know, some stick from the boys. You know, it was, wasn't easy in school for me. But I loved doing what I did and I just stuck in and obviously now I've had a great career. Yeah, and you're still retaining your accent. I can still just hear, hear the it twang. The <laughs> My family think I sound Glaswegian, so I'm glad that you said I've still got a wee bit of the twang there. So. Yeah, and your twin sister as well. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, yeah. the two of you, was there a wee bit of competition? None at all. None? Uh, completely different um, positions. Shelley was a, a sweeper back in the day and, I mean, she would take bodies where I was just a striker, an out-and-out -out finisher, so completely different. And... Shelley just wasn't into it as much as me later on in her career. She just decided to, to retire early and, you know, start a family early where I just kept going and decided to have kids later on. Yeah, uh, there's a few clubs along the way. I mean, you've had yeah. a, a brilliant <laughs> career. I mean, yeah. you talk about being picked for your country, which is yeah. magnificent, but clubs that mm -hmm. you played for, you know, Glasgow City, Hibs, yeah. Celtic, Arsenal as mm -hmm. well. I mean, what were the highlights for you? For me, it was obviously the, the trophies, the titles and, you know, but for me as well, it was actually being part of a team, you know, the, the teammates that we've met, you know, we're, I'm still best friends with them. For me, it's more the social life. That's what I miss now is not having that banter in the changing room and going to training and get a giggle. So for me, it was it was actually meeting the friends that I've still got today. Yeah, it was great picking up all the titles and, and things like that. But you do meet true friends along the way. Yeah. And scoring goals, uh, yeah. you know. Second nature to you. <laughs> yeah, well, they call me the goal machine, but not so much now, um, sir. But yeah, for me, the goals were great as well. But that's, you know, that was my job up front. So it was a collective as a team and to pick up the trophies as a team was, was superb. Yeah. What was the banter like in the dressing room? Oh, it was great. Honestly, the stories that I could tell you that <laughs> probably wouldn't be allowed to go near. But no, the, the group of girls that we had, Julie Fleeting, Stacey Cook, Mandy Burns, Rhonda Jones. Um, yeah, we got up to a few few things off the pitch and... And that's what's good for a team, you know, the, the team are all off the pitch and having that connection and banter, so it's memories to, to cherish for life. In Scotland, it may well have not have moved up to the technical mm -hmm. level that it is at now when you were first setting out in mm -hmm. your career, um, but down south at Arsenal, it certainly was. Yeah, the, the standard down there for me was great. It was such a, a shock for me actually going from playing up here to going down to England. Um, but it's a challenge that I relished and you know, I was really honoured to have been down there. You know, you question yourself, like, why am I getting picked for Arsenal? And I must have been doing something right up here. So, yeah, it was it was fantastic being down there and being part of such a such a huge club. Yeah, trebles. It's great yeah. when you can say Suzanne Grant, a I treble know, a winner. Treble How winner. does that feel? It's actually, it's even you say it back, it's like <laughs> you still have to pinch yourself, you know. And, and for me, it's stuff that I can pass on to my kids and say, you know, your mum got a treble, but your dad didn't. <laughs> <laughs> David, don't like me for saying that. Um, but, you know, it's... 
it was it was so, so big down there and it is you know women's football special in England we know how big it's going and hopefully the Scottish League which is improving it's getting better you know Glasgow City uh, doing massive things for the women's game up here so um, hopefully people can just get you know behind it and push it on in Scotland like it is down in England. There must have been a, a favourite game, a favourite moment in your career. I know you had a, a really special week in yeah. 2009 where everything just seemed to go your way. Yeah, f Arsenal, I scored the, the winning goal against Everton to, to win the league for Arsenal. You know, Being involved in the FA Cup was all, also exceptional. Scoring goals in Scotland to win the league for, for Celtic and, and Hibs and Glasgow City. For for me, it's, it's not really one moment that stands out, but... Probably it would have to be my 100th cap for Scotland and a scored against America in that game. So that would be probably the biggest the biggest achievement and the, the best memory for me is being over there and scoring in front of there was I think there was 15,000 people there. You know, so back here we're not used to that crowds and then scoring obviously against the world champions at the time and we didn't win the game but, you know, scoring against them was a big thing for us. So and it was on my 100th cap. So it was it was a memory to to keep forever. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, listen, <laughs> don't worry about scoring and not winning a game against yeah. the World Champions. Tom, Tom Lloyd scored for we're, Brazil. We're they, lucky just they to score against them. That was, I think it was, it was three one the final score. So, yeah, it was it was three 0 to them, and then I came on and I scored. So, it was a, a fantastic memory. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, any girl would be proud of mm -hmm. that. Um, your your whole family's immersed in it. I yeah. mean, you're married to a footballer. <laughs> yeah. His brother's a footballer. Yeah. Your dad was a footballer. I mean, yeah. twenty four seven. My twin sister's a footballer. And, uh, her husband's Don Kerry, who's at Ross County currently. So, yeah, it's just uh, no pressure on our kids then, really. Um, and Oscar's at EKYC, so he's doing great there. And it's just really good. It's, I think now I appreciate what my parents done for me when I take Oscar to his training and his games. Now I'm like, it's hard, it's hard work. But, you know, then they seen his wee smile on his face and loving it. That's all that, that matters. Yeah. How, how big a journey was it and how big a, an obstacle was it for you to say to your parents, look, I'm playing with the boys. I, mm -hmm. I want to try this as a career. Well, in our school, it was like the... The girls had to do netball, the boys had to do football, so my parents had to write a, a letter to my head teacher saying, you know, Suzanne and Shelley really want to play football, is this an option? And obviously now there's n there's none of that, but for us it was a you know, it was a hurdle and we live away up in the sticks, so it was like four hours sometimes to get down to games. So my parents used to take turns and driving us down to Glasgow to play and yeah, it was difficult at times, but thanks to them I had the career that I had as well, so it was great. Yeah, a few questions to go before mm -hmm. we finish. Yeah. Um, first of all, we all have our heroes, uh, whether we were younger mm -hmm. or indeed uh, now. In the in the women's game, is there someone that you, you looked upon and you thought, mm, she is top drawer, really like what she's all about? Yeah, she's actually now my best friend, Julie Fleeton. So Julie was, you know, she's a mother that's went back and played, and obviously that's what I seen myself. I was like, Julie's had a great career, all these caps. You know, had children went back and play, so I kind of followed what Julie done, and maybe not to Julie's level because Julie's exceptional. And um, yeah, so Julie, Julie kind of took me under her wing when I went into the squad. She was captain and took me under her wing and kind of helped me be the player that I was today. Yeah, and, and I've asked a million and one footballers who've all sat down where you're sitting right now <laughs> about the strips mm -hmm. um, because. Barry Ferguson says he kept a few. Yep. Ruffy kept him in a bin bag up in mm -hmm. his loft. Um, you know, there's amazing the amount of footballers who nonchalantly maybe have them in a drawer somewhere. What mm -hmm. about yourself? I've actually gave mine away to charity. So people that have asked me, you know, if you've got anything that you can give or to auction, then I give my tops away. But my football caps um, are split between my mum and my dad. Um, they're not together, so they get half and half. So um, they've got them framed in the house up north. So... I don't. I, only one cap I've got is my hundred from uh, UEFA with the the medal. So that's only one that I've kept myself, and it's in a, a frame in the house. Yeah, and, and of course, uh, you know the one thing I, I hate to criticise you, but yeah, you are known to hobnob for a freebie. <laughs> uh, I spotted you at the best uh, for um, FIFA, mm -hmm. uh, no less. How did that come oh, about? They just they just emailed me. You know, I got the email and they're like we're inviting you over to the opening of the Women's World Cup, and then obviously to the the awards there um, in Milan and. I actually emailed the back saying, have you sent this to the right person? I was like, why am I getting invited? But honestly, Peter, it was incredible what a, what a, you know, a day it was, a, a night and to be part of it and just sitting there and like Messi's over there and Ronaldo and um, it was just, honestly, I was pinching myself. It was just incredible and obviously a couple of glasses of free champagne to top off was exceptional. Oh, well. <laughs> Can't beat it. There's a North of Scotland girl <laughs> exactly, straight, straight to exactly. heart. I, I mean, tell me you get a selfie. I've got loads of selfies, <laughs> loads of selfies. If you look at my Facebook page, you'll see I was just the Scottish one. Can I get a picture? And everyone else is just looking as if, but for me, it was just like, 
these are people I looked up to in my career and I'm actually now socialising with them in the same room. So, yeah, yeah, it was incredible. Any lows? Any lows in your career? Because I looked yeah. through it all and mm -hmm. I've looked through the whole thing and I'm thinking to myself, well, you know, su such a long, great career, north and south. Yeah, I got a, f a few injuries on the way and um, actually my last injury kind of ended my career for me without me having to decide when it was my turn to end. I was actually pregnant with Theo, my little one, and um, I think I was seven weeks pregnant and the Astro or there was glass on the pitch and it split my knee right open. I was in a brace and, you know, I've got a, a child to take to school and I'm pregnant. So for me, it was just, I had to call it a day. So that was a low because I didn't, I didn't really want to give football up, but it kind of took the decision for me. So my kids were my priority and obviously having an injury like that, I couldn't risk getting an injury again. So yeah. I don't, I, to call it a day. I don't think I have to tell you, you're tremendously proud because when they go through the history books mm -hmm. and they go through that timeline of, of women who have made an impression, you know, you go back to Rose Riley, you're going through Julie Fleeting, mm -hmm. um, you know, mention my old pal Rhonda, Rhonda, Rhonda. Who, can, who can walk through she our village like a hero uh -huh. as well. Uh, from your own point of view, there must be a tremendous amount of, do you look back with pride? And, yeah, uh, I do, and, yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's not only till I think I had my own children, I look back with pride because before I'm like, yeah, it was just football to me. But when I actually look back and stop and go, well, I have done X, Y and Z, I'm like, wow, like a a, a girl from Grand Town and Spey up north achieved that. And and yeah, there was hurdles on the way and obviously I had to get over them. And now I can look back and go, wow, it was all worth it and pass on hopefully to my children to, to just whatever they want to do, you can achieve it. Yeah. So, and yeah. uh, is it fair to say that, you know, we talked to, right at the start about the money that's mm -hmm. now coming into the game. Do you think you'll get to a situation, or do you believe we'll get to a situation where one day women will be paid the same as men in this sport and it will reach the heady heights of, let's just say, women's tennis and men's tennis? Um, I, I, for me, I think the, the payment, the same, you know, I'm all for equality and stuff. Um, but I think until we start getting in the crowds like the men, then we can justify getting paid the same. But by all means, the, the women should be paid where they can play full time, you know, play their mortgage, have a car. You know, for me, it was a struggle. You know, I had to pay my bills, go to college, have a job, be a mom. So for me, it's just all about what they deserve. And obviously in England now, the money's huge. So they're getting rightly what they deserve. Up here in Scotland, we just need to push it more. And then hopefully the girls can be full time and, and be comfortable. And I'll leave you with the last question, which is, I know the knee might not hold out, yeah. but are you available for any fives games should Definitely. we need you? Definitely. <laughs> Sign me up, Peter. Not a problem at all. Suzanne, it's been an absolute <laughs> nice pleasure. Nice to meet you, Peter. Thanks for having me. Thank you.